Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I am from IGS Electronics and today it's Parker 650 time. So uh, we're going to be working on Parker 650 module drives. This is pretty much all the settings we're going to be doing today. It applies to most of the all Parker 650 modules. So uh, again, we're going to be doing a three part video. We're going to be looking at the commissioning the drive and the running in a local run. Then we're going to do the second one with two, three by controls, exploring more uh, uh, parameters and things like that, what's inside the drive. And then the third video, we're going to be doing a uh, MOP frequency control and the multi frequency control setups as well. So uh, pretty much with these three videos, I'm hoping to get through as much as uh, understanding of the drive as we can. And before we get started, as usual, we're here at IGS Electronics. We buy and sell industrial electronics. So if you are looking to buy things, definitely check out uh, our uh, eBay page or website uh, where you can find a variety of uh, all sorts of different types of industrial electronics. And if you're looking for selling, get in touch. Either way, from eBay or a website or whichever way, uh, email and things like that, whichever way you prefer to do it. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, now the drive is all wired up, let's have a look at the terminal. So, uh, UVW, motor output, uh, L1 and L2 and uh, Earth, that will be for uh, Incoma. Uh, THA1 and a A1B, that will, those are, are for the thermocouple, so uh, this is where you, if you have one for the motor, you can put the thermocouple in there. By the way, by default, the thermocouple is in uh, ON. So uh, by default, so a default will be appearing if you don't have one, but I'll show you later on how to switch that off. These are the relays in here that you can uh, play with if you wish to for the out uh, feeding information outwards. And uh, from one, two, three, four, and five, you've got a analog uh, input output in there. And from six to 10, you have digital inputs. So uh, the next one we're gonna have a look at is, and actually, by the way, that's it for the digital inputs. And obviously this, part in here it comes off and you can just put the plain thingy on it because this one's this one you can uh, sort of uh, buy separately and go from drive to drive i think they're sort of starting phasing out this this kind of system but uh yeah and uh, for the control panel in here you can see a start stop button self-explanatory and when you hold the stop button you can go uh, to a ready when it shows ready you are in a remote mode and by holding it again when it finishes this local thing and you are back into local mode. That's pretty much what those buttons do. Uh, we're going to show you in a minute as well how to do the full factory reset. And obviously to enter the menu, hold the M and you have a three, uh, three groups in here. One is diagnostics, next one is parameters and next one is the setup. And each group will have subgroups in it. And uh, here we go. And some groups, some subgroups, even subgroups. But yeah, this is how you pretty much navigate it via manual and use E to go back uh, to whichever menu you want to go. And if you get, just keep clicking, you go back straight, straight back out again. Holding diagnostics, parameters, and setup. We're going to be using a lot of this. And again, enter the parameters and you start with the P1. This is pretty much all your P1s will start. So uh, that's the front keypad, pretty straightforward. Next, before we get started uh, to we do with the programming and setting up the drive, let's do the factory reset. And to do that, we need to depower the drive. There we go. And then hold these two buttons together and put the drive back on. And there we go. Let it go. Click that, click that, and your drive is fully reset. And this is the error what I was telling you about. It's going to pop up because it's looking for the thermocouple, which is, which is not there. So maybe we can fix that quite quickly. Yeah, let's just take that off. And do go to setup. And to this weird writing, whatever that is. And you're looking for the actual error where it looks like that. OT. I don't even know what, how would you pronounce it. But there we go. And then select it to one. Enter it and then uh, exit it. So that way the drive is pretty much ready to uh, remove that error. So it's no longer looking for thermal couple. All 
Alrighty, now that we have uh, done that, we can start setting up the drive to uh, run this motor. Uh, this drive, uh, this is a, it's a 650 series. There's another one called 650S and 650G. They are a little bit different, but the same same, same setup what we're doing in here is, 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 is exactly the same as the other drives. It's just there is a couple of other setups you are able to do like auto tunes and, and some other things in those other drives. So. Uh, just bear that in mind, but this same uh, principle we're going to be, you know, what we're going to be doing in here, can be applied to other other drives as well. So the first parameter we're going to be looking at is a uh, number one parameter number one. Uh, uh, parameter number one. It's a uh, application group. In this application group, uh, what uh, Parker has done, they have created the groups which you just select and they pretty much do all the pre-programming for you and you just follow the wiring diagram and you're good to go and obviously the fine tunings other like acceleration, deacceleration and frequencies and things like that you can do it yourself uh, if you wish to but the main things for the uh, for the digital inputs and uh, outputs it, it just sort of does it for you it's pretty good you're going to be uh, checking them out in the uh, next uh, upcoming video so definitely stay tuned for that and the first problem that we're going to be entering in or checking is our max speed frequency so uh, it's obviously 50 check your motor plate data plate try to stick to that and then it's minimum speed if by any chance you want the speed not to go below a certain amount uh, that would be the way to do you program it in here and the next one is uh, i think is uh, acceleration yeah, acceleration time which i already i set it to one there's the acceleration time is set to one and by the way if you want to set uh, the anything in there so you can use up and down buttons and trying to go like if you can, it goes for one uh, one digit at the same time or if you want to jump the group you can use m in here so you can see it goes all across everything. And once you're done doing it, just click E and it will just load and go for, go out and leave the parameter. So the sixth one is already, we the, the, the sixth one is actually the, the most important one. This is where we set up our current, which I have already done, which my one is 1.98. And the next one is going to be a 7, which is the base frequency. It, that base frequency very much depends on which country you are in. I'm in UK and we are running everything at 50 Hertz in here, so we are leaving at 50 Hertz. So you need to make sure that you are you are set this up to your incoming frequency. And next one is number eight. This is a jog set point. I'm not going to touch that because you're not going to be needing that at all. And the uh, next one we're going to be looking at is what sort of start mode we're using. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So the one that def by default is set to rump is basically the motor speed is reduced to zero at a rate set by the acceleration time so it's going to be using the acceleration time to slow down and stop the motor and the uh, so first uh, this, that, that will be set at zero and the one would mean you are uh, is coast so the motor is allowed to freewheel to a standstill and the third one is dc injection so uh usually everybody uses the ramped so that's uh, and that's why it always comes as a default so keep it that so and the next one is a ve shape and I think VE shape, which is the 11 and the 12, both of these are very much correlating with each other. It's quite weird the way it happens, but they both are sort of, it's the same, but are not the same. So it's basically you you you, you uh, characterize what sort of loads you're gonna be using. Like uh, in the 12 in here, you go in there, you, the zero stands for heavy duty. And heavy duty, which is basically in reverse, Time allows 150% overload for 30 seconds, where RAM's back current to limit to 105 seconds for 10 seconds, 105% over 10 seconds, and the lower load, the overload error remains the same. A at 127%, low blah blah blah. Basically, if your load is going to be jumping up and down uh, uh, quite sharply at all the, all the times, you want to go for the heavy duty. And if your load is like pump and uh, fan, you go to uh, normal duty because your current is going to go up slow and come down slow. So uh, it's quite simple for that purpose. You select the, the normal or heavy duty. So that will be it when it comes down to a setting up this drive and ready to go. So and to start the drive is quite simple because you are in local mode already, which I showed you already how to go from local to a uh, remote. So by clicking start, my drive is effectively on and by we know the web was way to start but 
There you go. And my, and by the way, my, my, it doesn't show me uh, RPM. It shows me the percentage. So 100% uh, will be 50 hertz. So, uh, and when you stop, it sort of saves that. And uh, it, it, do, it do, you can set this up before you, as you can see in here, I can, I can change the frequency in here and press E and we we'll it's loaded. And that, that's the one that once you press the start, it will go to. And you can still use M as well to lower it quickly. It's pretty good. I like that for the side. Thirty-five percent of the speed you set up. So load it. So that way you pretty much are able to set the uh, speed and uh, get your drive pretty much going. So that will be it for this drive, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you hopefully that gets you where you want to get and gets you going. And uh, uh, if you like the video, definitely give us a like. And if you don't. Uh, give us a dislike and comment below what you like what you don't like about it and uh, if there's anything else you'd like to would like to see from it and, and have any questions regarding this drive definitely post them up in the comments below and other than that thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video